Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Zemo, the dad in DPS, and we have another video today. Now, today's video is something you guys have been requesting for quite a while, and that is how do I farm legendary script? Well, for the most part, it's quite simple, but the reality I need to set up is how many characters I have. Now, the thing to take into consideration is I have five fully leveled characters. Each one of these, um, I am consistently farming the 300 script on a near daily basis. It's not quite every day. Um, on top of that, I mainly spend my script at the purveyor. Now, what this basically means is that whenever I spend 2,000 script, I am going to get 40% of that script back if the items aren't used or they are just useless. So, let's say I get 20 completely rubbish items, I'll get 800 script back. If I craft the same amount, well, a craft with the same amount of script, I'm only going to get 400 back. So it's a massive difference in terms of the, the, the script. I mean, it's only realistically a day and a bit, but at the same time, it makes a massive difference when it comes to farming. So, when it comes to farming, now the first thing I always mention is legendary enemies. They're obviously the biggest, most important thing to take into consideration when you think about script. And the reason that is, is that te well, typically throughout the day, I will move to certain areas on the map, kill a bunch of enemies, and then move on. Now there are a couple of places on the map that are best for this. The first is West Tech. West Tech is probably the best XP and uh, item farm in the game. And when it comes to legendary enemies, you're just going to be able to get loads of them if you are willing to spend the time. You go into West Tech, wipe out the area, then come back out, go to usually Vault 76, relog, and then come back into the server, and it's usually completely respawned. On top of that, you can just swap server and do the exact same thing. There are a couple other places, like uh, Huntersville, where it's full of super mutants. There's the White Springs Golf Course, and then there is... Oh god, what's it called? There's a little town full of ghouls. Either way, it's not really that important. I'll link, I'll put stuff down below in regards to that. So that's the first kind of thing to take into consideration when it comes to farming legendary enemies. The next is events. Now, there are a lot of events in-game. And there's not a really good reason to go into every single individual event. These will pop up willy-nilly. You can't control when they're going to appear. So telling you about specific ones is not going to really get you any real benefit. When it shows up, go do it. I'll leave a list of them down below. But the main events that I usually like to discuss, the first is AWOL Ornaments. Now that event... Uh, Typically, the important thing about it is it spawns hordes of enemies. Typically, if you go there, you will get maybe one or two robots that will spawn per wave. Um, but if you go there with a big enough group and with people, you will typically get anything up to like 10, 20 robots per wave. Each of these has a chance to be in legendary, so you get a lot of robots, you get a lot of potential legendaries, and then at the end of the event, there is a guaranteed free star legendary. So that event guarantees a legendary. Um, obviously kill these, get that. Then there's also things like Uranium Fever, which has free legendary enemies that spawn throughout the course of it, that are guaranteed to spawn. And then you've got other events like um, Guided Meditation and Radiation Rumble, where they spawn a huge quantity of random ghouls uh, that in turn can each be legendary. And more often than not, you go to Radiation Rumble or to Guided Meditation and you're getting like four or five plus legendaries. It's very, very unlikely that you'll get any less than three. Very, very unlikely. Now there is quite clearly two major events that need to be mentioned separately when it comes to this and that would be the two nuke spawn events a colossal problem and scorched earth now if you launch a nuke drop it on the two relevant areas monoga mine or uh, the um the fisher site you will get a big boss spawn these are guaranteed to drop a legendary enemy and the events themselves are guaranteed to drop a free star legendary with the caveat that, obviously, Errol can actually technically drop three 
free star legendary items. There are two cursed um, weapons, a cursed harpoon gun and a cursed shovel that can drop during his event. And obviously you get a free star legendary just for completing it. So that's potentially free that the event can drop. And obviously he himself, Earl Williams, can drop a free star legendary as well. Um, he can also drop a one and two star. But, you know, that's, that's the, the point. You can get whatever comes from that. Now, after these events, we have to go into seasonal events. You get the the big seasonal events like um, the the Mothman Cultist one. I cannot remember the Mothman Equinox. Um, there's also Invaders from Beyond, um, Meat Week, all manner of different events. Each of these will have their own little individual legendary enemies that spawn throughout certain parts of the events and whatnot. Kill these enemies, you get legendary. Typically you get legendaries by completing the events as well. More often than not, they're only a one star. But that is that is a thing that you can get legendaries from these events, so completing them is also a good idea. Um, but you do also have your ones that periodically show up, like your treasure hunters, your scorch, uh, well, holiday scorch and spooky scorch. Now, these ones are important because, obviously, when you find these enemies that are dotted all around Appalachia, they each come being a legendary. So they drop legendary items on top of that, which, again, can be kind of the script. And then you also have the mole miner pails, the holiday scorch boxes, whatever. Um, these, in turn depending on the size, can contain scrip. So if you open a big box, you can get a big amount of scrip. It's usually anywhere between 5 and 50, I believe. If there's a bigger number, leave it down in the comments. I honestly can't remember. But that is a very important thing. You can get quite a sizable chunk of scrip from these um, these events. Uh, and if you go and farm like them, the treasure hunters are probably the, the best ones to talk about because they seem to pop up more often. If you go and farm the treasure hunters and you get a lot of pails, you will in turn get a lot of scripts. So they are a very, very good script farm. Obviously they're not throughout the year, but it's when it shows up, monopolize on it. It's a good way to just get a lot of script really quickly. Now, the last kind of questy event type one that I, I'm going to mention is your obvious uh, daily quests. Now you've got a bunch of daily quests that are typically based around Crater and the Foundation. There is other ones dotted all along the map and again I will probably leave a link to the wiki page on that. Uh, but each one of these that you complete can get you some scrap anywhere ranging between 3 and I believe 8 scrap for completing these daily quests. I personally don't find them worth it anymore. I feel like I spend more time doing them than I, I would need to. Like I think in the time it would take me to do all those events I could probably find 5 or 6 legendary enemies and in turn scrap a crap load more stuff than is worth doing with them. I mean, if I finish my script for the day, yeah, I could do it, but I just don't fancy the effort. So they do exist, they are a thing still. Um, so look out for your daily quests. Again, I'll leave a link to them down below. And then the last factor is daily ops. Now, daily ops is something everybody knows. Uh, you go into daily ops, you complete it within the time limit and you get one of three ranks. Um, if you complete the top rank, you get all three ranks. Uh, so if you get a completion of under eight minutes, or I think it's even 12 minutes when it comes to the the rank you need, you will get two legendary items on your first completion of the day and then every subsequent completion after that you get one legendary item. So you do have a chance of getting two big legendary items from daily ops throughout that and you do get potentially some scrip and that can again be anywhere between I think 10 and 50 so you can get a fairly decent amount of scrip by doing daily ops but I would only really recommend farming daily ops after you've exhausted your other script choices of just grinding legendary enemies, doing um, events, all that kind of thing. Um, the thing about daily ops is that it's quite a mixed bag. You One day you could find that it's super easy and super, super productive. You can get in there four minutes, three minutes, complete a daily ops. Other days, it's like pulling teeth out of your head. Um, so yeah, take, take that with a, a pinch of salt on what you want to do in regards to daily ops. I would... I wouldn't recommend doing it um, constantly, it will drive you absolutely insane. 
Either way, that, that's pretty much all the methods I can think of and everything that I pretty much use. And as I said, I'm going to leave links or rather lists of the events that I typically go to, um, wiki pages in regards to uh, the daily daily quests and whatnot, so that you guys can have a look at that, have a read at it. But that's pretty much that. I don't really have much else to say on it. That was today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, there are several means. You can click that uh, coffee button to donate to me directly. There's also our Teespring for the merch that you can see on screen right now, as well as our YouTube member button and the new Super Thanks button. So if you'd like to support the channel, don't forget to hit any of them. Now on the note of our members, let's thank them. And let's thank those YouTube members, The Chosen Undead, Goldtate, Diofin Gaming, Bubba Doodle Mom, Scott S and BDP, and then the Dad's Army members, Wyatt Blackburn, Bollers Me, Colin G, Peggy Billy, Matanzo, Devilman Games, Marcus Garrisco, Ranger Twig Scribble, Anxiety Rangers, Numpty, Sickle Man, James Colstrom, and Country Boy Stevens. Big thanks to all of you, and your continued support is really appreciated. So yeah, this video obviously people have been asking for a while. Now, it's really up to you how you want to go about these things it is a very very easy thing to do when it comes to farming legendary items but it's just figuring out where and how to get them that tends to be the biggest thing and for all the events that i tend to farm i'll leave down in the description so make sure you check it out down there either way guys i'll catch you next time in the wasteland